Hello, uh, I'm going to cover today the ELT presentation that my uh, group and I did. I've made some revisions uh, since we've gone through the entire class uh, and I wanted to cover, we specifically focused on YouTube and finding YouTube videos and covering Mayer's 12 principles of multimedia design. So that's what I'm going to cover today. All right, so first the video that I found for this presentation, uh, I was intentionally trying to find a video that didn't uh, meet very many of these uh, principles and didn't effectively work as a how-to video. And so I found a video that uh, teaches users or intends to teach users how to use Spotify in uh, streaming using OBS. And so we're gonna cover that. So some of the principles that it met, okay? It met, um, it met number one, Okay, extraneous words, pictures, and sounds are excluded. There were no extraneous sounds, there were no sounds at all, uh, or pictures or, or words, they were all excluded. Uh, it, did, it did meet uh, characteristic number four, uh, corresponding words and pictures are presented near rather than far from each other. Um, all of the information that corresponded to the images was on top of the images, so there was no rewinding or looking back or having to remember what something was. Uh, number five, uh, corresponding words and pictures are presented simultaneously. Again, that's a carryover from number four. Uh, and since the um, text narration that occurred um, was on top of the image, they corresponded and were simultaneous with the pictures. Um, number six, it also met multimedia lesson is presented in user paced segments. Again, this is YouTube, so you could pause, you could rewind, you could fast forward, you could make it go faster. Um, all of these things allowed for the user to control the multimedia. Some other ways that it met these qualifications, uh, the multimedia lesson, uh, when they know the names and the characters of the main concepts, I, I would say that um, anyone who stumbled on this video probably was looking for what this video was intending to teach, uh, being that uh, it was teaching a very specific task, how to implement Spotify music into OBS. Uh, so, you know, someone who stumbled upon this probably wasn't, wouldn't stumble upon it accidentally looking for something else. So they would know what they were looking for and this would in, in, in hope be what they were looking for. Um, number eight was kind of half and half. Uh, it talks about graphics and narration uh, being, being uh, better and more supportive than uh, animation and on-screen text. Uh, and in this case, there was on-screen text, there wasn't animation, there were videos, and there wasn't uh, spoken narration. So it, it, depending on your view, it sort of meets it. Uh, continuing with that, number nine, words and pictures, uh, then from words alone, uh, it is a video and there are words on top of the video, so this one was met at the base level. Uh, number 12, uh, people do not necessarily learn better from a multimedia lesson when the speaker's image is added. The speaker's image, much like in this video where you see me speaking, was not in this video, um, and so this one was met. Uh, the presence of a person didn't necessarily help or hinder uh, this video in the long run. In regards to the principles that were not met, um, cues that highlight the organization of the essential material, there were no cues. It was very confusing to figure out where the person giving the tutorial was clicking or what part of the screen they were manipulating uh, because words just appeared on the screen. Uh, number three, graphics and narration, then from graphics, narration, and on-screen text. Um, there was no narration. There were graphics because this was a software walkthrough. Um, so uh, it, it, it really, you know, failed on this, on this account as well, again, because there was no narration. Uh, number 10, multimedia lessons when words are in conversational style. There no, were no words spoken and they weren't in conversational style. The text that did appear on the screen was typed in a converse, conversational kind of way, but being that it was just text that appeared, it, you really took out the human element, which again, uh, which also goes with number 11. Uh, narration in multimedia lessons is spoken in a friendly human voice. There were, was no human voice. There was no computer voice for that matter. So there was really a disconnect from um, what the person filming the tutorial was trying to, the message they were trying to send to me, the person watching the tutorial. So finally, some overall assessment of the video. 
uh, some things that would have helped the video is, I think the biggest thing is they could have added voice narration. It would have been a, a lot better. Um, they could have been more clear about what the video tutorial covered. Uh, they, they weren't really clear about that. It just kind of started and led you through this tutorial and hopefully you got to the end. Um, here, this is a, a, an important place to note. Uh, the tutorial didn't work. Uh, I walked through what they were trying to show people how to do and it didn't work. So um, there, there definitely was a gap there somewhere. Either I didn't do something right because I didn't know that they had done it on screen because they didn't have cues to show me what they were doing um, or it, it's just the, that um, the software updated and it doesn't work the way it did before. Who knows, but it didn't work. Um, again, though, going back to what I just said, adding cues to show um, the viewers where the presenter is clicking and where they're manipulating things would have also been very helpful.